رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي so inshallah today we are going to begin surah ibrahim we finish surah yusuf we finish surah ra'ad now usually it is said that surah ra'ad and surah uh, ibrahim they're like twin surahs all right you will see the so it's a makki surah like Surah Ra'ad, right? Like Surah Yusuf. So you're going to see the same theme. However, in uh, Ra'ad, you saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning his favors, right? And in Surah Ibrahim, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeping with the same theme of the Meccan surahs, which is uh, the mention of uh, Tawheed, the mention of the prophecy of, or the Risala of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Day of Judgment. The theme is there. But you will see over here that Allah subhanahu where Allah mentions more about the messengers. There's a specific mention about the messengers that came with his message and the purpose for that is to show the unity that existed between the messengers, between the message itself, the me which is the message of Tawheed, all right, and also their experiences. They were united in their experiences, whether it was in terms of acceptance or rejection. And what is the purpose of that? The purpose of that is to console Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the prophets that are mentioned are Musa Alaihi Salam, Nuh Alaihi Salam, Saleh Alaihi Salam, Thamud, I'm sorry, Huda Alaihi Salam. And then we have Ibrahim Alaihi Salam, where about half a page is dedicated to his du'as, and therefore that's how the surah gets its name. All right. So these are the, this is the running theme, all right? The experiences of the prophets and the uh, response that they got from their community. And the second theme that permeates throughout this surah is also the response that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or the response that people give to the ni'mah to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they continuously reject despite Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting them all things that they know, that they see, that they perceive, that they feel, and things that we don't even think about, that we continuously take for granted. Even those blessings are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one asks for it, but it's there, all right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah, he wants to evoke a sense of gratitude within us. Keep this in mind. The essence of gratitude is to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did I say? The essence of gratitude is to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The perfection of gratitude is to utilize whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in his path. Okay? So we spoke about the permeating themes in the surah, which is the unity of the messengers in terms of their experience, in terms of their message and all of that, right? And then also the ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted the response that human beings are supposed to give and that is of gratitude. So we are reminded of that. With that, let's get started with Surah Ibrahim. The first ayah says, Alif Lam Ra. So again, this one also begins with Alif Lam Ra. Uh, surah Ra'ad began with Alif Lam Mim Ra, right? Yeah. So, and this one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues by saying, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka. Okay. It's a book that we have sent down to you. All right. It's a book that we have sent down to you. Here, the mission of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is outlined. Or the mission of, in, in few words, all right, in one line, if you want to describe the, uh, the, the mission of any prophet or any messenger, this is basically that line. All right. What is the purpose of sending messengers? What is the purpose of sending a book? nasa, So that you deliver. Okay. Akhraja yukhriju means to remove. All right. But just to polish the translation so that you deliver the people from layers of darkness, okay, from layers of darkness towards light. And this is very interesting because zulumat is a plural, okay, and it is the plural of zulma. All right, Zulm and nur is singular, light. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to evil, okay, he refers to it with a plural word, zulumat, okay? And when he refers to faith and guidance, he refers to it with a singular word, nur. 
right? So because there can be various shades of shirk. We're talking about shirk, but shirk can have multiple shades. We're talking about evil, but there are multiple ways of doing evil deeds, right? However, the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only one. So in the Quran, whenever you have evil being referred to, it is referred to by this plural word, al-dhulumat, okay? And then when you have faith, or truth being referred to, it's referred to by the singular word, an-nur, okay? And then over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to um, clarify that, or make it clear that all this is happening, all this is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not authoring all of this. Because one of the criticisms against Quran in the Makki Surah, and even now that we see it, right, it is that, so there, there are two groups when it comes to the uh, to, uh, while discussing the authorship of Quran. There are two groups. One is who believe that this is a revelation from God through uh, to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam through Jibril alaihi salam. And then the other group thinks that it is it has been authored by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by Prophet Rasul by Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he just came up with the article that I shared with you the Yaqeen article it mentions that we'll look at it in a little bit okay so here the purpose of Quran is being mentioned why mention to clarify that this is from God okay and then from here this is explanation for an nur what is that path of light what is that light from darkness? He's come to deliver people from darkness to light, right? What is that light? That light is Surat Al-Aziz Al-Hamid, the path of the mighty, the most praiseworthy, okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he talks about Al-Aziz and Al-Hamid, the question that follows next is who is this Al-Aziz and who is this Al-Hamid? So you have the description of that Aziz and that Hamid, of course, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it says, Allah ladhi. So that's why you see Allahi. Why, did, why is this Kasra? Why is this in the Jar state? Because it is following Al-Hamid and Al-Aziz. Okay, so Allah hilladhi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard. Simple, one statement. You know, in Surah Ra'd, we saw an elaborate description of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he can do, right? But over here, you will see these one-liners because the focus is not on the, of what Allah can do and what Allah cannot do. That's not the, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shifting the dialogue, all right, from the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his qudra, and he is talking about the, his message. All right. The focus is now on his message, the validity of his message and the validity of his messenger, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. OK, so after having spoken about or talking about himself briefly, then he begins to talk about the disbelievers. OK, the kafirin, the disbelievers who are not on this path, who are not on the path of the Aziz and Hamid. OK, so curse upon the disbelievers. And curse upon curse for the, uh, the, the, the disbelievers in terms of a severe punishment. All right. And number three goes on to describe these disbelievers. Who are these disbelievers? What are the characteristics of these disbelievers? The first one is the crime, the mother of all evils, the ones who prefer the worldly life over the akhirah, okay? They don't see past this dunya. Alladina yastahibuna al-hayat al-dunya ala al-akhirah, that's the first one. The second characteristic is, wa yasudduna an sabilillahi, and they prevent or they stop or they create hurdles, all right, that we see in the Meccan era. They create hurdles in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am not believing, that's not enough. I'm going to make sure that you also don't, don't believe, right? Like how when the first group of uh, the uh, Sahabas, they migrated to Abyssinia, the Quraysh, they went after them, even in Abyssinia. Why? Because they wanted them back. It's not like, okay, they, they have left our land, let them do whatever. No, they went after them, even in Abyssinia. We're not believing, we're going to make sure that you also don't believe, okay? 
وَيَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So that's the second characteristic. What's the third characteristic? وَيَبَغُونَهَا عِبَجَا And if this does not work, if this formula does not work, where they're trying to create hurdles in the path and you're still not like giving up this path, you're still holding on to Allah and his messenger and his word, does not make sense why you're doing that, then the next tactic that they adopt is they seek crookedness. And what does it mean? They seek crookedness in it. What is this it referring to? The path. Okay. What is this it referring to again? The guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends, the message, the Quran, right? So they seek, um, they seek crookedness in it, meaning they're going to ask questions like, okay, how do you know that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he fabricated the entire thing, na'udhu billah. He just came up with this on his own, right? This, none of it, none of it is from Allah. And there is actually, this, this one is gaining momentum. This, yabhuna um, ha'ibaja, is gaining momentum in current times. You know, this is, this does not seem as effective as maybe this tactic will, where they are trying to put or sow these seeds of doubt in the minds of Muslims by asking questions, which they themselves are clueless about. There's no, and I'll show you a video today, inshallah. Okay. These people, okay. Who are these people? See the discussion. The mention is here. Kafirin. It's talking about the kafirin, right? So those people, they are far, far away in deviation. Okay. They've, they've crossed the farthest limits in terms of deviation. Okay. So three characteristic here. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number four, he talks about uh, messengers and why he talks about messengers over here. So remember, we ended the third one over here by saying that they see crookedness. So one of the questions that the Quraysh used to ask Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, why has this Quran been revealed in Arabic? Why not in any other language? What's the purpose of it? right? Simply to create confusion in the minds of people, right? Asking, not for the sake of finding out, but asking for the sake of deviating people, all right? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that, he responded by saying, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ We have only, مَا illa only, we have only sent messengers who spoke in the language, we have only sent a messenger who spoke in the language of his people. Musa alayhi salam, he spoke the language of his people. Nuh alayhi salam, he spoke the language of his people. Saleh alayhi salam, he spoke the language of his people. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he spoke the language of his people. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he speaks the language of his people. This is basically the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how it has been, right? And what, what good will it make if we send someone to you, all right, and he does not speak your language? How, then you are going to be okay. Why didn't he send us someone who, who we can understand, right? So you see, the purpose of asking the question is not really to seek an answer, but it is simply to confuse minds. It is simply to play with the messengers. It is simply to make things difficult for the messengers, create hurdles, all right? So um, the purpose of sending a messenger who spoke the language of his people, what was the purpose of that from here? Li yubayyina lahum so that he may clarify for them, okay? So that he may clarify for them whatever is in it, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides whoever he wills. There is a dot dot over here, okay? And that dot dot will be filled, the blank will be filled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides whoever he wills, meaning whoever, who, whoever chooses misguidance, okay? Whoever chooses misguidance, he will be misguided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whoever he wishes. Again, a blank there. Whoever chooses the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Whoever is guided, keep, this is the, um, the, the, the final statement that you can derive from this ayah or ayahs like this, right? Whoever is guided is guided because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever is misguided in this dunya, it is because of his choices. Okay, it is because of his wrong choices. It is not like, and remember in this context, I always tell you, remember the story of Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to leave Fir'aun misguided and his misguidance is exemplary, 
all right? Till today, people refer to him as an example, right? Prime example of misguidance. He's someone who called himself God. There's no one else who can cross that the bar that he has set, no one can cross that. That's the highest in terms of misguidance, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him not one, but two prophets, okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even instructed Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam how they should talk to him when they go to him, speak to him in the softest speech. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to remain misguided, why do all of this? And then there was a prophet who was raised in his household. So Allah creates these opportunities for you. Now you make the choice. We make the choice, right? And then the, 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 the consequences that follow, it is the result of those choices, all right? So here, in a generic way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to one, or gives an example of one of the crookedness that they seek in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all right? And he responds to that. And then he begins to give example of Musa alayhi salam. All right, in number five, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا Surely we have sent Musa with our signs, okay? From here, when Allah says, we have sent Musa with our signs, what does it mean? Meaning, so this un will be translated as meaning, okay? This is another, I know you know the meaning of un to be so that, but there is another meaning of un, which means meaning, all right, meaning IE in English that we say IE, all right? So surely we sent Musa with our ayahs, IE, I comm Allah, we commanded him, okay, we commanded him, what did we command him? Akhrij qawmaka min dhulumat Remove your people from the layers of darkness and bring them or deliver them towards light. This is the first command given to Musa alayhi salam, all right? And then, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ And remind them of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to? The days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the day that they were delivered from Pharaoh when Pharaoh was drowned and they crossed the Red Sea or so many other examples, so many other instances that occurred in the life of Bani Israel, the day that they were uh, delivered after 40 years of uh, circling in the Valley of Thih, right? So all of that is referred to by Ayyam. Ayyam over here literally means days, okay? But meaning days that major events took place in the calendar of Bani Israel. So you can say it means the blessings. Okay, days over here, it can mean blessings and remind them of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The days on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted you huge blessings, enormous blessings. Okay, and in that, in nafi dhalik, what is the dhalik referring to? The dhalik is referring to the ayyamillah, okay? In that, la ayatil, there will be signs for everyone who is a sabbar, Okay, so bar meaning abundantly patient. Okay, abundantly patient. And then shakur, abundantly grateful. Okay, abundantly grateful. So bar and shakur, they, um, a person, each one of us, we are in between these two states. Okay, we're either sabbar, so like if you are in the state of difficulty, you express patience. And if you are in the state of uh, blessings, then you express gratitude. Both are the states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he constantly changes for people. Okay. At one point you are required. So it's a test. Every circumstance in your life is a test. And the attitude that you're supposed to reflect is that of a sabbar or a shakur. Anything other than that, you will fall out of the bandwagon of the of 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 the uh, group of believers okay so sabar and shakur and then in the next ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after talking about remind them of the days of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number six allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically illustrates or reminds them of the favors that he granted them and what are those favors in ayah number six what is qala musa when Musa, remember, when Musa told his people, all right, Uzkuru ni'matullahi alaykum. Remember the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. Specific reminders, right? What are those specific reminders? 
إِذْ أَنْجَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنِ When he rescued you from the people, from the family, from the nation of Fir'aun. Al meaning family, people, clan. It has very broad meaning, okay? From the people of Fir'aun. And what were they doing to you? يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ They were subjecting you to the worst of the punishment. Okay, yasumuna kum su al adab wa yuzab. And what was that adab? The explanation of that adab. What was that? Wa yuzab bihuna abnaakum. They would slaughter the baha yuzab bihu. They would massacre. Okay, brutally kill your sons. The baha. See, the baha means to slaughter. Okay, when you slaughter an animal, you use the word the baha. When you say the baha, it's a massacre, basically, brutally murdering someone okay so that's why you is being used over here you the they were brutally killing your sons okay while they were sparing your women and you can imagine why they were sparing their women for for, for and how they were using those women who were left behind without any men to take care of them and in that in that, this adab that Fir'aun was subjecting you to, in that, for sure, there was a very great trial from your Rabb, the mighty. Okay? I number seven. What's the time now? 9.01. Okay. okay, I'll just go up to eight. What is ta'adhana rabbukum? And ta'adhana means to announce. Okay? When your rub announced, all right, when your rub announced, la in shakarto, this is uh, when Musa alayhi salam saying to Bani Israel, right? When your rub announced, if you are grateful, la in shakarto, and this is one of the most commonly used ayahs in khutbahs or of all scholars, all halaqas, like it's, it's, it's that universal teaching, right? If you are grateful, right? La in shakartum, la azidannakum. One universal teaching that we learned in Surah Ra'ad was what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change anyone until they change themselves. He does not change a nation until the nation change, changes themselves. That was one universal teaching that you learned in Surah Ra'ad. This is a second, this is another universal teaching that you're learning in Surah Ibrahim. Okay? And what is that? in shakartum. If you are grateful, la azidan nakum. I am going to only increase you by multiples, right? Well, in kafartum. However, if you are, or if you reject, right? In naada bila shadid. Indeed, my punishment is going to be most severe. And number eight, waqala Musa in takfuru. And then Musa said, if you reject, antum wa man fil ardi jamia, you and whoever, okay, if you, meaning if you all reject, and who are this you all? This one says, you all, right? Who are the you all being referred to over here? You and everyone on this earth together. If you were to reject, Keep in mind, it's not going to do anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not going to take away from his status. It's not going to change the fact that he's the creator of this world, that he's the creator of everything in it, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent and he is always going to be praiseworthy, okay? And from here, from ayah number nine onwards, we see the response, we see the mention of other prophets. You see Nuh is being mentioned, Ad is being mentioned, Thamud is being mentioned, okay? Other prophets and nations are being mentioned and the responses that they received, okay? The responses that their people gave, what, what specific statements they made, all of that we are going to see. Why? Again, to offer consolation to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to show us the unity in the experiences of the messengers, all right, and um, in the message of the messengers. So what we see here, right, in Quran right now, documented for us, we continue to see in our times also, all right? It's nothing different. This has happened before. Islamophobes existed then, okay? And Islamophobes exist even now. They attack the integrity of the messengers then. They, they will continue to attack the integrity of the messengers even now. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like I always say, Islam does not need anyone's defense. Islam is and will remain and will prevail on its own, okay? 
So all these, you know, we, we, can, we, we don't have to force anyone. We don't have to force the uh, belief on anyone. And we don't have to go killing people because they don't believe, right? It's their choice. And we leave it at that. We, our job is only communicating the message, which is what these messengers did. And the response that they gave, and it is so appropriate, especially considering what's happening in France right now, these ayahs are so appropriate because it shows that, you know, here we're talking about where Rasulullah's cartoon is made, he's not here, and how a person reacted or responded to that, right? And the, these, are these are experiences that they physically went through, that they went through in their life and the response that they gave. So there's a lot to take from just uh, going through the next few eyes, inshallah, which we will do. And with that, we will conclude today's lesson, inshallah. And if you have any questions, we're going to answer them.